Today, we're going to talk about drains. Uh, the drain section in the slides that I have to go through is pretty long, um, so I'm going to save that for another time, but I wanted to talk about um, just the common double trap issues. Uh, we did have a call back recently. Uh, we've been out there seven times since the install to clean the drain, but um, you know, the last couple times people were realizing this drain isn't clean. Something else is going on. And so a double trap issue in a drain can cause um, a periodic drain, which is, you know, a pain. It's very hard to find something that works great at one point and doesn't work, work great at another. Can someone tell me why, when there's a double trap, that the drain will not drain properly? There's an air block that's happening, a secondary one that can't get out. Yep. So we're going to do the, the chase. I wish. That's going to be the chase. That's the chase. Okay. Let's do a drain line. So the drain line was black, but now it's blue, so you guys can see it better. Here's your T. Drain coming in. All right. Make sense? All right, so down here, we're going to put in our return box. And this is our most common double trap. How, this, how did this double strap, trap happen? Right, what did you say? Pushing the return box down. That's right. You guys both nailed it. The drain line was pushed down to the floor. So um, maybe we pushed copper, maybe we didn't, but there were some adjustments made to the drain line. And uh, you can see there's not much room below the return box typically and our chase, and then it's usually a 45 degree or a 90 coming out of the top of that chase, right? And so uh, if you have to go around a return box, it, this section is typically already almost level. So what happens is it's usually all exactly as it should be, but the last second when we're installing our air handler, we need a better pitch right here. So we push the T down. Mm -hmm and then we attach everything. And in doing that, we push this 90 down to the concrete, which is typically a little bit lower than the joint because our joint comes outside of the chase above the concrete level. And so this one, you can sometimes have a nice clean drain, but other times not. So what ends up happening is this fills up with water all the way through here to here, and then this, fills up with water. And so it runs, turns off, the water drains and sits here and here. The next time it runs, it starts pushing against an air pocket right here. And the air pocket pushes up here, but the, the air is lighter than water, so it doesn't go underneath and push its way out of the chase. It just gets stuck and the water backs up against it. So. A double trap prevents drainage because it traps an air pocket in the high section. Anytime there's a high section where water can spill down and fill two different sides, we have a trap that, with an air pocket in the middle of it. And then the water will come and push that air pocket and actually not actually push it through. Now, if it's subtle enough, you can sometimes get the bubble. You can hear, you'll hear a little bit of bubbling. It'll work its way through and then eventually get stuck and the, the customer will have a drain that doesn't drain. What would be a sign uh, from outside that you could see that would... Intermittent dripping. Intermittent dripping, okay. Flow. Yeah. Flow so, stop, flow stop. Yeah, you have your drain. It could flow like really great for 10 seconds and then stop. For 10 seconds. Flow really great. And then stop. Uh, or it's the on, off, on, off, on, off, and you know it's bubbling through that middle section here that it's trying to work through that bubble. So watching your drain, seeing the real consistent drain. Sometimes if you feel the trap up from the back side, you'll push it through 
and you'll fill this whole section with water, um, and you won't notice it. The system will run, and then the first time it shuts off, the water kind of settles slowly, and then an air pocket gets in the mix. Would it be possible for a system to run for like eight to 10 hours post-install? Mm-hmm. Sure is. Yeah. If we fill it from the outside, and then, you know, big heat load, um, yep. post-install, and it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs, mm -hmm. like a good little air conditioner that it is, and then it turns out satisfies at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., mm -hmm. and then they wake up. The one that we went back to where we've been out seven times apparently in the last year since the install, it was so subtle that it would still eventually work its way through, bubble, bubble, bubble. So if this thing ran long enough, the water would back all the way up here right before it hit the float switch, and it would shut off inside and satisfy, and slowly bubble, 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 work its way down. And so it took the event of a long enough runtime to fill this all the way up and then trip the float. So that wasn't happening every day, that was happening um, a couple times a month maybe or less. And um, so when we went there, we dumped a lot of water into this pan, kind of pushing this process a little bit faster and notice it backed up and they just kind of sit in the pan. So you can catch a lot of double traps that way, dumping water into your pan. You keep this T on. The second he pulled the T, it relieved some of the air pressure, just the movement probably on that section, that PVC moving and then it would drain out. Um, one thing you can do is you do your install. If you can grab the drain here and pull it up, then it's probably pushed down. So typically before you t attach this to you, you'll want to lift it up, maybe put a vice grips on the bottom or something like that. Um, the best thing is if you have access down here, you are opening this, put a brace under here, two by four strap, something. Strap it to the bottom of the drain. Um, I've made the mistake many times of just setting the brace there and then when I was working here I felt it kick off because they didn't actually strap it to the bottom. But put something underneath here that lifts this up and we can have that pitch. So um, common easy mistake. What's the next area that is a really easy common place to have double traps in an install? Attics, my guy, that's it. Yep, so you have these long, straight runs, and over time it sags down across the trusses, and then it's gotta drop down into a wall. And so you have systems that have been running for years maybe without a drain back up. A half inch, a quarter inch, two inches, we made a change. And when we lifted up this side, it pushed down one of the other sides. And now we have a sag in our attic an area that already didn't look great, already wasn't perfect, but it's been draining, and we just touched it a little bit, and now we have a double trap issue in our attic. So every attic install where you have drain line going across and it's gotta drop down somewhere, we need to, after we've positioned everything, chase that drain line from the point of where it drops down and back up and give it a gradual pitch. Strap it put it to a stud, put something underneath the drain line, whatever you need to, but always check your attic runs. It, don't just assume it's been good for years, so I don't need to go back in there and see if it's sagging. Uh, we've just made a change, some level of a change. It could be only a couple inches, but we've made a change on it. So let's strap it and make sure it's got a steady pitch all the way through. Um, yeah. Double trap issues are monsters because they aren't always showing when you're there. And the other side of it is, is that to a customer, a drain issue is a piece of cake to solve, right? Water just goes downhill. All you gotta do is clean it. You didn't clean it very good. You've been out here four times. You just keep cleaning this drain. And so you know, it feels like a very elementary problem. And when we can't solve it, we look pretty ridiculous but the double trap issue can be pretty hard to solve. So, um, another common one is that we attach to a drain system that already had a trap 
maybe it comes out of the wall. Maybe the drain comes out, we're upstairs and it comes out of an external wall and just has been dripping like this onto the ground for years. And we decide, hey, we're gonna make this look a little bit better. We're gonna bring it out up and drip it into the bushes. Great thought. However, we just created a trap where there was no trap before. And so um, there's a chance that this was trapped somewhere in these walls and somebody eliminated this for a reason. And so don't add extra traps to your drain for no reason. That's an important lesson. Um, you have a trap vent upstairs, that's great. You can have your attic trap vent or your upstairs trap vent if you can't see a trap somewhere on the line. But if you show up and the system looks like visually it has zero trap. Air handler, no trap, go outside, you just go straight out the wall, no trap. That thing has trap somewhere in the walls. We wouldn't be running without backing up without the trap. So it's trapped somewhere in the walls. You add a trap, you're gonna to have to add a vent in between the walls and the new trap you've added. Um, so it, it's better at that point to, if there's a way, let's avoid adding a trap to this unit. Um, if you're unsure, I don't know for sure if this has a trap in the walls or not. You can add a trap at the air handler with a vent. And then you know you have, with that vent, you haven't added an additional double trap. Between that and maybe what's in the wall, the bubble can escape out the vent, right? So that's the purpose of the vent. After your trap, you have a vent. So, but those are a couple ones from last year that, that we ran. Um, we were adding traps because it looked good in certain places and also there were several attic long runs that had issues and then this one this one's very common for all of us um, if you can feel the play here then we should be pulling that drain up and it's too easy even maintenance guy can come back and if this hasn't been strapped and secured he's servicing here he's messing with stuff and slowly pushing it down so strapping underneath that corner is super Couple. Cool. I think that's about it. Good. Um, quickly, uh, I want to encourage you guys on drain lines and premises, whoever's uh, you know not the, not the lead. Um, cleaning out that drain line is 100%. It's just like flowing nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, that is 100% best practices. No, no exceptions, no exclusions whatsoever. That drain line needs to be cleaned out every single time. Because oftentimes what we're doing um, is we're deleting an old system, um, an inefficient system with a copper coil on it. Um, well, th that thing that thing ran great for 20 years. They're they're really impressed with you guys. They write the, the Google review, right? They press enter, they send it, um, and then we have like the weird drain issue a couple hours later or a couple days later, because often what happens is like a weird infection um, already existed in that line. We no longer have like the antimicrobial properties from that copper coil, and that machine is much more efficient, and it's deleting a lot of the humidity inside the household, turning it condensation. It's um, much more efficient. They don't know that. They just know that they spent eight thousand dollars to however many whatever, um, and their old system never did this. Did it? And we never had problems ever. So I want to encourage you guys, again, as we're putting in these new efficient machines, one of, uh, one of the critical steps, and it is a non-negotiable, is cleaning out that drain line. Because we're putting so much more condensation through that line. Um, so I don't know where it fits um, in your flow of things. My encouragement, my suggestion would be to get that dealt with and out of the way first and foremost as quickly as possible. As you're uh, ripping out the air handler or whatever the situation is, um, cutting it or whatever, flushing it, hooking up a vacuum, sending four, five, six gallons through that. And then we discussed last year, um, the we can put, uh, what was it, condenser cleaner? Mm -hmm. Condenser cleaner 
uh, into that line. It's got uh, enzymes in it that will eat away at any remaining organic growth in there and just cap it, cap it, and let it sit there for four hours. Let it sit there while you're doing your work. Let it just be anywhere that water touches. Um, it can just be sitting in there doing its thing. Cap it outside um, and then and fill it. And then just let it sit. And then one of your last things to do is to uh, discharge that. Safe to like discharge. You can get it on your hands. Like I mean, don't wipe it on your face, but it is safe. Don't rub it into your eyes or anything. Um, <laughs> don't drink it, but it is safe. You can discharge it, flush it, flush it, flush it, and then as you're testing it, don't just wait for the, you know, fill the trap one gallon like we're Gucci. You're not, you haven't tested what that, what that drain line is going to be subject to. Run multiple, multiple, multiple gallons of water through it slowly, just slowly. Mimic what, what it's going to be subject to. It's um, always best to do this from the pan, and um, because that's where you have the tea cap on, and you're testing if you have a double trap and you're not releasing any bubbles through that tea trap and then when you pour through the pan um, if you see it just sitting there you can often catch pitch issues maybe the drain's coming up just a little bit too straight or the air handler slightly back and it's time to make a slight adjustment before leaving there um, so that's good and you're testing the pan's the best and you're testing you want to include like all of the variables that exist um, so yeah, you don't want to just be, yeah, we're, I mean, we're good, like three, four gallons down the tee, no problem. But then, I mean, do you have pitch, pitch issues coming from the air handler to get to the tee? You're not going to know that. So test it exactly how it's going to run and operate. System off, whatever. Um, you know, fill it, dump a couple gallons down and watch it drain. Confirm it. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, Give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.